the Porsche 981, one of the shining stars of the Porsche modern era. A quintessential flat six mid-engine rear wheel drive layout with two seats, 325 brake horsepower. The Porsche 981 truly is the pinnacle of the two seat roadster segment. But what makes the 981 truly special is that it's the last of the naturally aspirated engines in a Cayman without having to go out spending a lot of money on a GT4. It has an advantage over the 911 in that it has that mid-engine layout. So you don't need as much talent. You can have more confidence when throwing these cars around the twisty roads and not worrying about kicking that back end out like you would in a 911. Even your grandmother could drive one of these, shred up some tarmac and be confident that she wouldn't damage the car or kill anybody around her. Now I've personally owned my Cayman for just over two and a half years now and in that time I've been lightly modifying the car to a stage where I think I'm quite happy with the car now and I probably won't do many more modifications. Famous last words but I have spent a fair chunk on modifying this car and that's what this video is kind of going to be about. I'm going to be showing you all the modifications all the money that I've spent on this Cayman so that if you're maybe thinking about modifying your Cayman or Boxster 9A1 and you're unsure which route to go down, which modifications will look good or not so good, then this video may help you and give you an idea about which modifications you want to do. So it has that 3.4 liter S engine with around about 325 brake horsepower, which to me is more than enough for the British twisty roads and allowing you to get the most out of the car. I've always been an advocate for driving a car that you can get the most out of as opposed to getting a car which has just way too much brake horsepower, five, six, seven hundred brake horsepower and not being able to squeeze the most out of the car unless you take it to the track and even then you're still going to be limited by your own talent. So it's finished in white and has white spider alloys which aren't the exact same shade. I thought it was important to make sure that they were slightly different to ensure that you could separate from the wheels from the car. To make the finish a little bit more aggressive though, I have fitted front and rear spacers and from memory these are 7mm on the front, 15mm on the back. The wheels, the painting, the tyre, the spacer package came to a total of £4,100. It has been lowered with H&R suspension springs which makes the car an absolute dream to drive and going around corners again it adds to the aggressive look of the car without compromising ride or comfort. These springs cost me £325 and the fitting was £260 bringing it to a total of £585. As we come around the front of the car you'll see this front end splitter which was made by Techart and colour matched by a local paint genius not far from me. And this again makes the front end look more aggressive. It looks like a Stormtrooder's helmet, which is just awesome. The Tech Art Splitter was £1,000 and the paint to match for a front end blend was another £300, bringing the total to £1,300 to make this front end look just that little bit more aggressive, a little bit more appealing and just stand out from the rest of the 981s out there. Around the back of the car we've got this GTS rear splitter with the Porsche sports exhaust coming out of the sender which again just adds that different touch and is something you won't see on most Cayman S cars. The splitter costs around about £250, that's if you can find them. The side decals are pretty easy to fit but you do have to be careful. Some people like them, some people hate them but you know what? It's my car and it feels right for me to do it. These cost me £130 because I also bought the front decal which usually goes along the front but I've decided not to fit that but the side strips that you'll see on their own would generally cost you around £60-65. Inside the cabin I've upgraded the PCM which was pretty basic. All it has was an AM and FM radio and a CD player but now it has a CarPlay system with nav and is a thousand percent better. I fitted it myself which was pretty easy and that cost me £260. There's no bad angle on these 981s. They are built for a purpose. They just want to go fast. The Porsche engineers got it so right with this smaller setup than the 911. An entry level price into Porsche ownership and with fantastic performance to match. Look at that. I can accelerate into these corners with ease and have complete confidence that the car will stay on track and do as it's told. 
you really don't need a lot of talent to drive these cars because of that mid-engine 50-50 weight distribution layout. It just makes everything so much easier for you. One of my complaints with the 981 is that I didn't really think that the throttle response was all that good. So I've installed what they call a pedal commander or a chip commander, which now livens up the throttle, makes it rev faster, and ultimately brings the car to life and makes that throttle response just that little bit better when opening the taps. And it's so much more responsive and so much more fun to drive. It's actually called the Race Chip XLR, and I fitted myself with ease, and it cost £189. So right now this car is just about to push on to 65,000 miles, which is not a bad thing. And because it's not a low mile car, it means the car's already been enjoyed and you can happily drive this car and put more miles on it. You see, with a car like this, the enjoyment happens inside the cabin. Putting your foot down and actually driving it instead of keeping it in a garage and making it a driving queen. Look, if you're buying one of these cars, please drive it. These cars are not intended to have low miles. Why would you buy a car like this and keep the miles low for the next owner to enjoy? There are way more special cars out there on the road that you can keep in a garage, which you can keep the miles low if you so wish. Yeah, these cars are special, but they're not that special in that you should keep them locked up in a garage so that the, they retain their value. The value is inside the cabin driving one of these cars they 100 percent need to be driven and enjoyed yeah look it's not a gt4 it's not top of the line it's not the flagship 911 but is it still special absolutely and the values of these cars have retained quite high despite being driven hard and the very fact that they've retained their values is very indicative of the value of these cars in terms of getting fun out of the cars and people getting out and enjoying the cars because that's what they're made for and that's exactly what they'll give you. There are a few other modifications that have been done and should also be pointed out. So you'll notice on the front arches we have a set of carbon fibre arch guards supplied by Michael's Garage for £70. Colour coded key for £25. It has a £35 tracker with a £6 monthly subscription. There's a chrome classic style fuel cap for £60. The version 3.0 scan tool allows me to diagnose reset faults on the go and find important information about how the car is running this is £169 from Diagnostic World. I bought a set of 19 inch BBS CHR alloys and wheels which I fitted to the car and actually only had on the car for around about 100 miles. I just decided that I liked these spider wheels better so I took the BBS wheels off and I've since sold them actually. They cost me £3,000 and I didn't get anywhere near that back, unfortunately. I got £1,700 back, but at least it's something. I'm also pretty well covered for cars during the winter months as I do have a Mercedes and an Audi. The Audi is four wheel drive, but if I feel the need to take the Cayman out during the winter months, I've also got a set of Sport Techno wheels and tires, and these cost me £1,700. I should say that these have winter tires on. Couple of other mods that didn't really work out. I bought a ducktail from Taiwan, which fitted not very well. That cost me 400 pounds. A headlight tint that I didn't end up fitting was only 10 pound and a set of Zunsport front grills, which I do know serve a very good purpose, but I'm not sure I actually like the look of them on the car. So I haven't fitted them. In fact, I've still got them in a box if anybody wants them for cheap. They cost me 215 pounds. And I've also managed to pick up one of these genuine indoor car covers. Uh, second hand it was for 110 pounds, but it does ensure that the Cayman is nicely tucked up during the winter months while I'm cheating on it with other cars. Now, everything I've done on this car is being paid for with my own money. I haven't had any handouts or anything like that, so I think that adds value to the whole project and what I'm trying to do here in the, the passion and the enthusiasm that I do have for these cars. And I think it's important maybe to show that human element and that it's not all sunshine and roses. You know, sometimes projects can go wrong, they can get expensive, and you don't always make the right decisions. But ultimately, if you play the long game, 
you probably will be rewarded. So um, I'm happy with the way the car is right now. I ain't gonna do probably any more modifications on it. Maybe the odd tweak here and there. And I had thought about selling this car and I think to myself, you know what, for the money that you pay for one of these cars, I, I can't sell this car, I've, I've got to keep it. So I am gonna keep the Cayman in my garage um, and drive it as much as I can over the next year or so.